Hi, and welcome to the Virtual College Exploration for All Ohio Students hosted by OACAC. We are so happy for you to join us today. A few announcements before we get started. If you have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A button to type your questions, and that will go to the presenter. Your camera and microphone are off. Um, any communication that you need to provide to the presenter should be done in the Q&A section. If you're interested in an additional sessions, you can go to our OACAC website at www.oacac.org. And this recording will also be made available on that same website as well as recordings of our other presentations. Thank you again for joining us and I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Hello, everybody. Hello, I see we've got some folks here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's great to have you here. I'm very excited to spend the next 45 minutes with you all. Um, I am going to start by doing a little presentation about Loyola just to kind of give you a rundown of everything, um, kind of from start to finish about who we are. So I'll share a presentation with you and kind of dive right into that. And then I'll leave about 10, 15 minutes towards the end of this to, um, to answer any questions that you might have. So if you do have some, feel free to drop those in the Q&A. Um, but with that, I think I will go ahead and get us started. So let me go ahead and make this presentation for you. Lovely. Okay. Um, all right. So just to give you a little bit of an intro, um, in case you don't know much about us or me, uh, my name is Sarah Lang, and I am one of the admissions counselors at Loyola Chicago. And uh, I work with mainly students from the Ohio area. So hello to all of you. But I also have some uh, some territories all kind of scattered about. Um, I wish that I could visit Ohio this year. Sadly, we're not doing that um, this fall, but I encourage each and every one of you to reach out to me anytime at all. I am happy to help you with anything and everything that you might need. Um, I'll post my information at the end so that you have that. Um, but let's just dive right in and start talking about Loyola. So um, before we really get into the nitty gritty of things, I just wanna kind of start by giving you an overview um, of who we are. So uh, we are a Catholic Jesuit institution with a total enrollment of about 17,000 students, um, just over 12,000 of that being undergraduates. So that's really the population that you all will be spending your time with. Um, and we really truly are a mid-sized school. You know, I think we really toe the line well um, of being a, a larger, having like the academic and the social resources that those larger state institutions will have, but we still have, you know, small tight-knit communities, small class sizes. Um, so it's a really nice balance between those two. I feel like when you're around campus, you know, you're always going to be meeting new people, but you don't feel like you get lost in the sea of people. Um, We've got students coming from all 50 states, about 120 different countries. 41% um, of those students identify as a person of color, a minority group, um, and it's very important to us that people really feel like they have a place here at Loyola. Um, no matter what their background is, no matter who you are, or where you're coming from, um, we want to ensure that you feel like you have a community here. Um, and a big part of that initiative is going to start with our uh, Office of Student Diversity and Multicultural Affairs, also known as SCMA. Um, SCMA hosts quite a few different initiatives and groups um, throughout the year. Uh, many student organizations are housed within SCMA, for instance, uh, Brothers for Excellence, which is focused for men, on, uh, men of color on campus, um, Luces for women of color on campus, LASA, which is our Latin American group, our South, uh, South Asian Student Alliance. Um, we've got mentorship programs, LGBTQ initiatives and outreach, um, and so much more. So there's really quite a variety of programming and organizations that they offer, and that really is a hub for um, for diversity and inclusion on campus. Um, and we really wanna make sure that wherever you are coming from, that you are finding a space here at Loyola. We are a Catholic institution. Um, that's represented in the 55% of our students that identify as Catholic. And there's lots of ways that you can get um, involved in faith life on campus. And that's really gonna start with our Madonna della Strada Chapel, which you can actually see in the picture here, right in the middle. Um, that's our beautiful chapel right along the lake shores. Um, and we have daily masses there, uh, including a 9 p.m. mass for students on Sunday evenings. And there are lots of ways you can get involved in those. You could be a, a lecturer, a, a, a Eucharistic minister, a greeter, um, or you could join a choral group or an instrumental group, something like that. Um, outside of the masses, we've got CLC groups, which are Christian life communities. Those are just kind of small groups that meet weekly. It's kind of a nice way to check in. Um, and then beyond that, outside um, of that, we have many retreats throughout the year. For instance, we have an extension of the Kairos retreat, which might be something that 
you're familiar with from high school. Um, that's a Catholic focused retreat, but we have many, many um, interfaith retreats or non-denominational retreats. For instance, our 360 retreat, which is offered all throughout um, your first year as a student here at Loyola. Um, <clears throat> that said, 45% of our students are not Catholic, and we really truly pride ourselves on being a home to all faiths. So up on the second floor of our um, Damon Student Center, um, we have what's called the Hall of Faiths, and that's right next to our campus ministry office. And that's where you'll find meeting space for our Agape Protestant ministry, a puja prayer room for our Hindu students, um, the largest student-run mosque in the state of Illinois, um, as well as a Jewish halal. And those are all very common popular meeting spaces for those faith communities. Um, and we wanna ensure that those, those groups have space and have um, a home here at Loyola. And it's, it's kind of cool, they tend to interact with each other a lot. I remember one of our student workers told me that last year the uh, Jewish halal and the, uh, uh, the Hindu Student Alliance had a joint Friendsgiving. So it was a kosher vegetarian Thanksgiving, which is pretty cool. Um, but I really think the bottom line here is that no matter what your life experience is or uh, you know, your faith background, your cultural background, that there is a community here for, for you at Loyola and you will find that. We are a Catholic institution, as I mentioned, um, and we're a Jesuit university. So if you don't know too much about what that means, essentially uh, the Jesuits are the Lord, largest order of Catholic priests in the world. And they were founded way back in the 1500s by St. Ignatius of Loyola. And his ultimate goal um, was essentially to provide this holistic education to students that um, inspired both this compassion for others and this pull to fight for social justice um, in whatever sense that means to you. So how we kind of sum that up today is through the phrase cure personalis or care for the whole person. Um, our goal for you is that you utilize all of the resources and the tools here at Loyola um, to really challenge yourself, to put yourself into positions where you're growing um, your global perspective and starting to understand the world so that it can inspire you, um, can inspire you to help others and to come up with a goal that's really social justice focused um, in your life after Loyola. That's going to start really early on, um, honestly, right away with the core curriculum here at Loyola that gives you the opportunity to study things that are outside of your major field of study. You have classes with students who are outside of your major, outside of your college. You might have conversations that challenge you or make you uncomfortable, um, but they push you to, to understand the world a little bit better. And then of course, we encourage students to take that off campus, you know, service right to, in the uh, Chicago area or the Rogers Park area, which is our neighborhood. Um, you know, even further than that with an alternative break immersion trip or further even with a study abroad trip. Um, so there's lots of ways to ensure that you really are challenging yourself and um, really learning what Cure Personalis means specifically to you. Um, our hope is that you utilize the resources and the tools here to go out and explore the world and have new experiences and meet new people. And you use that understanding to, to bring back to campus, enrich the community, let it enrich you so that by the time you graduate, you really have this commitment to excellence for yourself and, and for those around you. Pretty heavy stuff, but before all that starts, um, your experience at Loyola is going to start right on the north side of Chicago on our Lakeshore campus. So we've got a couple nice pictures here, as you can see. Um, so just to orient you a little bit, if you're not too familiar with Chicago, obviously it's right on the shores of Lake Michigan. If you're looking at the downtown area um, and the Navy Pier area, if you zoom basically straight north about eight miles, that's right where we are. We're in the northernmost uh, neighborhood within the city called Rogers Park, and we're tucked up right against the shores of Lake Michigan. Um, the Lakeshore campus is our main campus. We do have two campuses in the city, uh, which I'll get to the second one in a minute here. But uh, the Lakeshore campus is really gonna be your main home base. Uh, this is where you will certainly live as a freshman, most likely as a sophomore as well. Um, and this is where a lot of our main academic buildings, our, our information commons, our chapel, our large student center and main recreation center, as well as Genteel Arena, where basketball and volleyball teams play. So it's really the hub for, for most uh, everything when it comes to student life and campus life here at Loyola. I think something that's really unique um, about the Lakeshore campus is that when you're looking at these pictures, it looks pretty traditional. Um, and I think that's very unique for being a, a city or a college within the city of Chicago. Um, despite the fact that we're in the third largest city in the US, if I plopped you right in the middle of the campus, you kind of wouldn't realize it um, because it's very green, it's very spacious, it's quiet, and it really feels like your own. 
Um, and I think that makes it a, an easy transition for students. It's a big transition to go to college, uh, let alone go to college in a big city. So having this campus that really feels like your own, where most of the students either live on campus or right in the surrounding area, really makes this feel like it's the student's own place. Um, and, and I think that's really helpful for students in transitioning. This is where uh, you will take your classes for your major if you're part of the College of Arts and Sciences, uh, the Institute of Environmental Sustainability, the Parkinson School of Health Sciences and Public Health, or um, the Marcella Niehoff School of Nursing. Even if you're not in one of those colleges, don't worry, you'll absolutely take your core curriculum classes up here, which is about a third of the classes you'll take at Loyola. So if you're in the, in the School of Business, Communication, Education, or Social Work, then you will take your major classes down at our Water Tower campus. Uh, so the Water Tower campus is uh, basically right in the middle of downtown Chicago. Just to orient you, if you uh, know anything about the Magnificent Mile, the kind of the famous shopping strip, um, Michigan Avenue, the Hancock Tower, um, the American Girls Store, anything right around there, that's exactly where we are. We're about three blocks right off the Mag Mile in the heart of downtown. Um, and just as Lakeshore is a very traditional feeling campus, Water Tower is urban and bustling. It is in the city and you really, really feel like that. Um, and really that just means as a student, you get the best of both worlds. You get that access to the city, you get the connections and the benefits and the networking that having a campus downtown provides, but then you still have the oasis of the Lakeshore campus. Um, like I said, we've got four of our main schools down here, um, but this is also a full service campus, just like Lakeshore. Um, so outside of taking classes, we do have a residence hall down here that is open to sophomores and up. Um, we also have a student center, exercise facility, dining options, a library, all that good stuff. So it's a full service campus and a very popular place for students to hang out, even if they aren't necessarily taking classes or in classes down there. Um, this is also where our law school is based. So um, it's a pretty popular place for students to study. You have access to the law library as an undergraduate student um, pretty much at all times except for during their finals week. So it's a really great additional resource that you have at your disposal there. Um, the two campuses that we have within the city are super fluid. Students will spend quite a bit of time going between the two. Um, so to make that easy, we have a shuttle that takes students back and forth. It operates 7 a.m. to midnight every weekday. Um, and it's a quick, easy trip up and down Lakeshore Drive. It's a really easy way to go between the two campuses. Um, <clears throat> but of course, we recognize there are some times when you don't exactly want to be stuck on Lakeshore Drive, maybe around 5 p.m. Um, so if you are traveling during the rush hour time, a really great alternative to the shuttle would to be utilize your U-Pass, which is your all access pass to all of the trains and buses within the city of Chicago. Um, it's essentially your ticket to the city. Obviously, it's a great way to commute between the two, um, but more than that, it's just a great way to, to explore the city. And that's certainly something that you will do during your time in Loyola, because when you're choosing Loyola, you are choosing the city of Chicago and what a city it is. Um, <laughs> obviously, in, in the third largest city in the US, a city of nearly 3 million people, you're going to have endless connections. You have access to these Fortune 500 companies, global trade and investment organizations, and that's really, um, that's really gonna be beneficial to you as a student, um, especially when it comes to internships. Uh, as a student at Loyola, you will have in access to internships all year round. Um, which is pretty excellent because most students who are pursuing internships within sh the city of Chicago really are limited to doing that during the summer months. As a student here, you'll get access to that all year round. That's going to cut out a lot of the competition. And it also means that you can have an internship and be a full-time student. And that's very common and very doable, um, especially when we're thinking about, uh, you know, our business majors. That's a pretty internship heavy field. So it's very quite common for them to have an internship maybe a couple days a week, maybe a few mornings of the week um, in the neighborhood of the Water Tower campus. And then you just hop over there um, in the afternoon for classes. So it's very popular. It's a quite, a, quite a normal thing to have. And, and it, really, um, it really expands your experience um, in terms of more experiential engaged learning. Beyond that though, um, the city is just so cool. It's a great place to explore. There's so many incredibly uh, unique, diverse neighborhoods to check out. You have access to pretty much every single one of those um, with your U-Pass. And you'll certainly spend time out there checking those out. We also have our, uh, our sports teams, our museums, 
in terms of getting out and checking things out off campus, um, we'll help you do that. You know, we'll often buy up a block of Cubs tickets. And so you can go to a Cubs game with other Loyalist students for the price of, say, a can of food. Um, and when it comes to the museums, obviously, uh, we have so many incredibly uh, cool museums to check out. The Museum of Science and Industry, the Abbott Planetarium, the Shedd Aquarium, uh, the Art Institute of Chicago, which US students get free admission to, um, and many other discounted options. So you'll certainly explore a lot in, uh, during your time at Loyola, and we really, really want you to take advantage of all that the city has to offer. Of course, we don't want to just stop there, and that's why one in three of our students will study abroad. Um, it's by far our most popular program, and the two most common places that students will go um, are our two international centers. Uh, those are actual Loyola campuses um, that are located internationally in Rome, Italy, and Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. And those are two popular spots uh, because since they are Loyola campuses, it's going to be kind of a similar experience to being in Chicago. You're going to be living in a residence hall. You'll probably have a meal plan. You'll be taught by a Loyola professor. It's going to have a lot of the same structure. Um, but of course, you're going to be in some place like Rome um, or Vietnam or, or really exploring the world, um, obviously, to a much higher degree than you could if you were just spending a semester in the city. Um, the great part about those two is that you also, uh, your financial aid package will directly transfer at those two locations. Um, so essentially, you know, if uh, if you do decide to go to Rome for a semester, it's going to cost about the same or possibly even slightly less than it would to just stay in the city of Chicago for a semester. If you're not interested in those two locations, we do about 150 different programs in about 70 different countries. So there are a lot of places to choose from and, and you can really customize this to the, the way that's easiest for you to experience it. You could go for a semester, which I'd say is the most common, but we also have a, uh, a full year option. We have options for summer study abroad, a couple weeks during your spring break, even your J term, which is about the, la the last half of your winter break. Um, and then we have a Rome Start program where students can actually choose to start at our Rome campus and study abroad there for their entire freshman year before matriculating back to our, uh, to our Lakeshore campus in Chicago. Um, <clears throat> so the bottom line being that there are a lot of options and we really work hard. Uh, the study abroad office is really good at, at working individually with students to make it as affordable and as accessible as possible. Because study abroad is such a, such a once in a lifetime opportunity, I highly encourage you to take advantage of it no matter where you go to school. Um, but specifically at Loyola, we'll do our very best to make it a possibility for you. So let's switch a little bit and start talking about academics. Um, so you've heard me mention um, our colleges a couple times. I'm sure that that was all a jumble of words to you. But um, on the left hand side here, you'll see all eight of our colleges listed out. So starting with the top four, which are located up at the Lakeshore campus, um, we're going to talk kind of individually about each of these. Before I get into that, I will say that um, just for your knowledge, we are based uh, on a system of direct and uh, admit here at Loyola. So essentially, that means that you'll be directly admitted into one of these eight colleges based on the major that you put on your application. That said, if you're not quite sure what you want to study, or if you come in and realize that what, you're, what you've chosen isn't quite the right fit, it's typically quite easy to move between the majors and the colleges here at Loyola. Um, that is in, except in the case of nursing, which I'll touch on in just a second. So, the College of Arts and Sciences uh, is our largest school, and that is going to be home to uh, our um, health and social sciences, uh, engineering science in its three disciplines, the humanities, Department of Fine and Performing Arts, interdisciplinary studies, and then that's also where you'll be placed if you come in undecided, which is very common. Don't be worried about doing that. Uh, the Marcella Niehoff School of Nursing is a direct entry program, so that means that you can only be accepted as an incoming freshman. We do not accept transfers into the program at all. So if you're kind of waffling between nursing and something else, or you kind of are thinking about nursing, I do encourage you to apply for the nursing program, just because if you realize it's not quite the right fit, you can always switch out later, but you wouldn't be able to switch into it. Um, as part of the School of Nursing, you will get access to our state-of-the-art simulation lab right on campus starting your sophomore year. And then, um, 
you'll do uh, seven clinical rotations in a capstone starting your junior year at about um, at some of the probably 20 or so affiliated hospitals that we have in the Chicago area. The Institute of Environmental Sustainability is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, we are a very sustainably focused school. We constantly have initiatives um, working to figure out how we can better reduce our impact on this earth. Um, and IES is really going to be the home of that. Um, they have many different initiatives happening throughout the year and lots of facilities in which students can do work and research, um, including our biodiesel lab, an aquaponic system, greenhouses, and gardens. Uh, the biodiesel lab in particular is pretty cool. It's the first um, biodiesel lab that is student run and licensed to sell their own biodiesel. And the process is quite cool. Essentially, they've coordinated with uh, neighborhood restaurants um, to uh, utilize their old used cooking oil. And they take that cooking oil and through a zero waste process create biofuel which is then used to power our shuttles back and forth um, between the two campuses. And part of that process um, of creating the biofuel creates a byproduct that's used to uh, create bio soap. And that bio soap is utilized in every single restroom across all of our campuses. So if you ever come and visit and you use the restroom on campus, that soap that you're using is, in, is a product that's made in-house and it's very sustainable. Um, so they're a very, very cool place, um, certainly. Uh, definitely a hub for, for a lot of the initiatives at Loyola. The Parkinson School of Health Sciences and Public Health is our newest school. Um, it's just over a year old now. And that is home to our majors in public health, uh, exercise science, and healthcare administration. Those last two uh, are previously, uh, previously part of the School of Nursing. And then our public health major is new. It's just over a year old as well. Um, but it stems pretty heavily from our well-established master's program in public health. So moving on down to the Water Tower campus, uh, the Quinlan School of Business is uh, the number one rated undergraduate business program in the city of Chicago. They've got 11 different degree programs to choose from there, and um, they're very, very focused on uh, engaged learning. They have a career center that is specifically focused on helping students in the school business um, find internships and networking opportunities. Um, so that's certainly something that you should and will take advantage of if you're a student in the school of business. And they also have the Quinlan Ramble, which is a spring break trip where essentially they will travel um, with a group of students to a large city in the US, um, I think most recently they went to Seattle and essentially you'll tour around to different companies that are headquartered there for networking opportunities. The School of Communication also kind of emphasizes that engaged learning and uh, they have what's called a digital convergence lab. And if you don't know what that is, essentially it's what you would see on the set of today's show, of the Today Show or ABC News. It's a very fancy way of saying um, a new studio. Uh, it's very state-of-the-art equipment, and it really gives students a chance to get hands-on experience with equipment um, and uh, situations that they will experience in the real world after graduation. The nice thing about that, along with our student-run newspaper, the Loyola Phoenix, and um, our student-run uh, radio station, those are all things that you can get involved in even if you aren't in the School of Communication. The School of Education um, is kind of a, at the forefront of where education is headed. Um, it's a very rigorous program in that we place our students into Chicago classrooms right away as freshmen, meaning but that by the time you graduate, you will have received about 1,100 hours of observing, aiding, and teaching. Um, it's pretty rigorous, but it really does, uh, does prepare students for those real life situations. And then last but not least, we've got the School of Social Work, which is one of our five-year bachelor master programs. Um, <clears throat> we recognize there are a lot of disciplines out there that really require masters to be um, a, a marketable applicant. And so our goal here is to um, save you some time and money while still achieving that master's degree um, and being a marketable applicant in your field. Along with social work, we've got 45 other five-year dual degree programs. Um, in a really wide variety of topics. I really encourage you to check those out. Um, <clears throat> but unlike social work, which you're automatically accepted to as a freshman, with the other five-year programs, you apply for those as a junior, and then you start taking master's classes as a senior. 
So I have mentioned a couple times uh, the idea of engaged learning or outside of the classroom learning. And that's something that's very important at Loyola. Um, every student that comes through is required to complete uh, at least a three credit hour engaged learning course which can look like a variety of things. For some students, that's gonna be field work or clinical. For others, it could be service. Um, you could have research or internships. And this could be done on campus under one of our professors or in one of our facilities, or it could be done off campus uh, in the surrounding Chicago area or even back in your hometown. Um, we've got nearly 700 different employers who hire Loyalist students for internships. And um, it's something that I will say is a very, very, um, very, very strong um, ideal here at Loyola. You know, every student will complete at least one engaged learning course, but many, many students will do much more than that because there is so much opportunity for that here. So if you're really interested in getting hands-on experience, um, you're gonna have a lot of opportunity for that here at Loyola. And then of course, um, we've got our excellent student life. Um, student life here is very abundant. Uh, we've got Quite obviously, 12,000 stu undergraduate students here that for the majority are living right on or around campus. So there's constantly things going on. Um, we've got 250 plus organizations to choose from. Those are gonna range from academic-based groups to social justice, service, faith-based, um, even just hobby and special interest groups like uh, the Hula Hoop group or the gaming club. Um, and then of course we've got club sports, intramural sports, we do have Greek life as well. And then we've got lots of different speakers and concerts and comedians who come throughout the year, all free to you as Loyola students. And then of course I'd be remiss not mentioning our division one sports teams, uh, the basketball and volleyball teams that play right on campus in Gentile Arena. And those games are free to you as a student, so there's no excuse not to go out and support those Ramblers. Okay, we are going to move very quickly into the application process here. I'm gonna breeze through this so I have some time for questions here before we get to the end. But um, what you're looking at here is our freshman application process. So um, if you're a senior, which I'm sure most of you are, then this is really important for you right now. You may have already completed your application or started one, but if not, um, let me just kind of run through how that process works. We are on the common application, um, and we also have a free application right on our website. You are welcome to fill either of those out. Um, fill that out at any time. Uh, we are off, our application opened on August 1st, so you are welcome to apply at any time now. Um, we're on a basis of rolling applications, so essentially that means that um, once you apply, uh, you'll complete your application, and then typically in about mid to late October, we'll begin reading applications. And from then on, we will be constantly reviewing and sending decisions on an ongoing basis to students in the spring months. So we don't do early action or early decision or anything like that. So go ahead and fill out that application. Um, and then additionally, once you've filled that out, you'll get access to a, kind of a personalized application portal that will help you track all of your other materials and upload um, optional documents as well. You'll be required to send us a high school transcript, which can be sent by your counselor. Um, that'll just include your grades from freshman through junior year. And then you'll also be required to send a recommendation letter, um, and that should come from a teacher or a counselor, really someone who knows you in an academic setting. Those are the only uh, three application materials that are required this year um, because we are test optional this year. So um, many students are having trouble taking the ACT and SAT this year, and we completely understand that. Um, so those scores are truly optional and that they will not put you at a deficit if you don't submit them. Um, I know many students are worried about that, but truly we have a very holistic uh, review process. So if you don't submit those scores, it's not gonna be a knock against you whatsoever. The one caveat with that is that if you are interested in the nursing or the engineering uh, program, you will be required to submit those test scores. So that's good to keep in mind. Um, additionally, you're welcome to submit a resume and an essay. The resume is just kind of a nice way to sum up your activities from high school. And then the essay is just a good chance to just talk directly to your admissions counselor. Um, up until that point, really all we're seeing is factual material about you. So that essay is just kind of a nice way to get to know you um, as both a student and as a human being. And we don't have a prompt for that, so you can write about whatever you would like. All of these materials should be submitted by December 1st, which is our priority deadline. 
So uh, talking about scholarships real quick here, um, we do automatically review students for scholarships when you apply. Um, those are based on merit, so that's really your academic performance, and those range from seventeen dollars to $25,000 a year, and you'll find about, about those in your acceptance letter. Um, <clears throat> past that, we have quite a few optional um, materials that, <coughs> pardon me, that you can submit um, or optional applications that you can apply for and um, those scholarship applications will be based on a number of different things we have scholarships for um, women's leadership we have a um, a stem based scholarship humanities based business based so um, there's quite a few different ones and you'll certainly qualify for one or two of those at least so those applications will pop up in your student portal usually in about early december with deadlines to apply being about late February to early or mid-March. And then outside of scholarships, obviously the main way that students will receive aid is through the free application for federal student aid, otherwise known as the FAFSA. Um, that application will open up through the Department of Education website on October 1st. Um, so be sure that when you apply for that, that you include Loyola um, on your list of schools to be sent to, and that will determine your eligibility for any sort of state uh, federal or Loyola based aid. If you have other questions about that, feel free to drop those in the Q&A. So before I end here, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the, the value of Loyola. Obviously, I've pointed to quite a few things that I think um, speak to the value of a, of a Loyola education, but um, I think a thread that really will run through your experience at Loyola is that idea of Cura Personalis, being a person for others. Um, a motto of the Jesuits is to create men and women for and with others. Um, it's not only creating socially active minded people, but it's understanding that we may not understand other cultures, other people's experiences, but what we can do is give them empathy and move forward with that and make a change in the world coming from that place. Um, and I think that that's something that truly will run through your experience at Loyola. You'll have ample opportunity to explore that. Um, and of course, after graduation, we will stay with you long after. Graduates will always have access to our Career Development Center. You will always go have the opportunity to go back to that. The professors will stay in touch with you. They truly genuinely care about your experiences and your successes. Um, so I think that personal, um, that personal care and that intentionality is something that um, is really hard to put a price tag on. And with that, I will end. Um, I'll go ahead and leave this up here for just a few minutes so that you can uh, write down any of this. This is my information. And then we also have an opportunity to connect with current students if you'd like to check that out. Um, you can text them or email them with any questions. We can also help you connect to students. And then if you want to reach out to admissions in general, we've got some information there. So we've got a couple minutes here left and I see a couple questions here. So let me take a look at that. Okay, uh, the first question is, is there a time restriction on the pass? I'm guessing that's referring to the UPASS. Um, so for the UPASS, essentially, that is active any time during the spring and fall semester. So um, <clears throat> during the summer months, if you're in classes, then you can utilize that UPASS as well. Um, but otherwise, any time, like including breaks, you know, any sort of fall break, Thanksgiving break, Christmas break, any time with that, um, that pass will always be active. And there's no uh, restriction on the amount of times that you can use it or how to use it or how often you can use it. So it's pretty wide open and very accessible. This is a good question. Um, how would you describe the type of students that attend Loyola? Gosh, um, that is a really, really good question. I think it's hard to sum up um, the type of students that attend in one um, in one word or one phrase, just because it's a pretty diverse community. Um, but I think the type of students that typically will choose Loyola are those who um, tend to be a little bit more adventurous in exploring the world, interested in um, connecting to the city, um, connecting uh, through study abroad experiences. I think a lot of the students that go here um, tend to come from farther away. We have about 50% in-state, 50% out-of-state, lots of students coming from across the seas, um, many students coming from California, from Texas, from the coast. Um, so students who are uh, innately interested 
and new experiences and pushing themselves into uncomfortable positions um, for their self-development. Um, I think that's definitely a hallmark. And then I think, you know, even if, um, even if you don't come in thinking this or really uh, consciously acknowledging it or knowing it, um, I think the type of students who have that intentionality in everything they do, I think that's a very important um, component of being a loyalist student is that whatever interaction you have, whatever class you're taking, whatever experience you're having, there's intentionality behind that to grow and to better yourself and better those around you. Another good question, um, let's see. So um, we have a question about the residence hall downtown at our Water Tower campus. So that dorm is only open to students uh, who are sophomores and up. Um, all freshmen will live on the Lakeshore campus just because that's a little bit more of a home base. Um, and we want to give you that access, that easy access to the other freshman students, to all of the opportunities that Lakeshore provides. Um, so you really only will live up there as a freshman student, but to be honest, it is very, very easy to get between the two campuses. And as a student, even if you are automatically in the School of Business as a freshman, you'll still probably only take one to two classes down there as a freshman, just because you'll be a little bit more focused on the core curriculum at that point, which will be mostly up at the Lakeshore campus. And then as a sophomore, you have access to that residence hall downtown. And let's see, we've got one more here. Um, to apply for study abroad and do you have to apply for study abroad and what are the requirements and expectations? That's a very good question. Um, so you do technically apply for study abroad um, and that you do have to get approval to go ahead and study abroad. Um, the main requirement there is that um, you are in good academic standing and that typically means I'm not going to say the, the required GPA just because I'm not exactly sure what it is, but um, typically good academic standing is somewhere around a 2.5 or higher. Um, so as long as you're in good academic standing and you have the ability to study abroad um, with your major, then you'll be good to go. Um, that's about the extent of the review process. Um, every student can study abroad regardless of your major. Um, if you are a nursing or an education or an engineering major, you're just a little bit more um, restricted in terms of where and when you can go. Typically those students, because they have such a rigorous curriculum and you have to take certain classes during each semester, those students really will study abroad typically at the Rome Center during your sophomore year. So um, it's kind of those two factors, good academic standing and ensuring that you're not gonna um, go off track of a four-year graduation timeline by studying abroad. And we've got one more that come in here. Oh, dance team. Yes, we do have some dance teams. Um, <clears throat> so we have a main dance major that students can audition for and be a part of. Um, but then outside of that, there's quite a few different types of groups. We have our, our dance team that performs um, at the like basketball and volleyball games. Um, but then we also have um, more of an artistic dance ensemble that's through the Department of Fine and Performing Arts. And then there's quite a few just um, like swing dancing, jazz, uh, there's like a swing dancing club, a jazz club, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember, there was one other, I think there's like a hip hop dance uh, club that was just formed a couple of years ago, but the main point here is that there are quite a few opportunities um, for, for dance teams, and you might be able to check that out actually on our website if you just look up some of the different clubs and organizations. Most of our dance teams will be listed as like a student or run organization, but um, there's certainly quite um, a variety of dance teams to, to check out here at Loyola. Cool. Any other questions? Anything else? I'll give you a second here. What school does computer science fall into? That is part of the College of Arts and Sciences. Excellent. Anything else? Fantastic. Well, if any other questions come up, I am your admissions counselor. I am here to help you through this process. Um, I know this is a crazy time in our lives, so I want to provide you with just a little bit of security, a little bit of consistency um, as we get into this college search and application process. So feel free to reach out to me anytime, make sure that you take down my information. Um, that is my office phone number, I will say, and we're kind of rotating in and out of the office. Um, so feel free to call me anytime, but you may automatically go to voicemail. Um, 
I'm getting those uh, voicemails back as quickly as I can, but sometimes uh, email is a little bit easier, quicker way to, to reach me. Um, otherwise, thank you all so much. I really appreciate you all for sticking around. Um, I've really enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful for you and I will turn it back over um, and uh, let's wrap things up. Great, thank you so much. I am going to just give a few last announcements before we sign off. Um, when you close out of this window, there will be a link for a quick four question survey. We would love for you to fill that out so we knew how um, these presentations have been going. Um, also, this is just one of many sessions that are being held. Um, so please sign up for additional sessions at the OACAC.org website. And then in about a week, you'll also be able to find this session's recording as well as the other sessions that we're hosting through this outreach. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Loyola, uh, for sharing your information um, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks, bye. Thank you.